and sit down. to another episode of more content talk that's the only show that cuts through the glare and the glitz and all the bullshit to bring you the truthiest news that we can find well 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 uh we're inside again so there that is um apart from that um tonight i'm going to talk about gangs i'm going to talk about gangs in terms of politics um you've all heard me say several times that gangs are an intricate part of the political spectrum um this is often ignored uh, for several reasons. Um, obviously, the politicians don't want you knowing that. It uh, kind of ruins their, their public image. And, uh, you know, we live in an age of image politics. And so they're not going to openly admit that information because it's not information that you want to hear. And politicians are there to tell you what you want to hear. They're not there to tell you the truth. That's just a fact. The function of the politician is to not necessarily lie, but to use the truth in a way that soothes you, that is soothing. Now, my job, if I'm an honest news reporter, is the opposite of that. I'm supposed to tell you a truth that is jarring. I'm supposed to make you care. I'm supposed to explain to you why you should give a shit. And in order to do that, you need to understand how intertwined gang life, thug life, and politics are. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to give you a history of the origin of gangs. There haven't always been gangs. You hear a lot of people say, well, this is just a problem we've always had. That's not true. You see, gangs became important when empires fall. When entire once great empires become ruins, gangs come in to pick up the pieces. Here's a bit of an example of that from an article called Gang Research, Gangs and Politics. The earliest gangs were primitive rebels, mafioso in Italy and triads in China, who had their origins in resistance to foreign rule the Spanish Habsburgs and the Qing and the Qing Dynasty. These Sicilian, Italian, and Chinese groups were not pure social movements, but combined nationalist appeals with the peddling of protection and control of gambling, prostitution, and drugs. That sound a little bit like those news reports you've seen about the cops, huh? Talking about maybe some drugs turned up missing. Maybe you saw an officer with a prostitute. And you really believe that that's a coincidence. Or maybe you just have gotten so used to it that, you know, you know better than to talk about this type of shit, right? You know to keep your head down and go to work. But who are you working for? You working for the politicians? Who owns the politicians? Let's talk a little bit more about thug life. In London, groups of hooligans were a 16th century byproduct of urbanization. During the 19th century, Chartist Rebellion, it was claimed that hooligans of all sorts pitched in on the side of working class organizations. But it was the United States that developed the paradigmatic use of the gang in local political affairs. This is a United States invention. So, in the beginning, gangs worked on a national level. They wanted to control the whole country. Now, you see, in the United States, it's about who controls the state. This is why you got a lot of these evangelicals arming up, getting all kinds of guns. Because they know, they know that if this nation went down the way that they wanted it to, there would be gang warfare in the streets. This is the chaos they're trying to cause. This is the takeover. This is what you saw on January 6th. And you are meant to think that this is just some people who have been misunderstood. These people know what they're doing, folks. There's all kinds of white nationalist gangs. There's all kinds of, all kinds of gangs. And they fight all the time. And you got to realize that or you're not going to understand what the hell's going on. 
Immigrants from Ireland, Poland, Italy, and other countries in the 1800s came to the U.S. cities and sparked periods of intense ethnic and class conflict. The building of urban machines relied on ethnic politics and clashes of immigrant groups were the norm in Boston, New York, and many cities. Many cities, you see that? Fighting for position, jockeying for position, seeing who's going to get the job, who's going to have the biggest piece of the pie. Not just a little piece of the American pie, they want all of it because they're fucking greedy. And you see they use ethnicity, they use ethnicity. That's how they mobilize people. They know it fucking pisses you off that that Irish guy got that job, that that Mexican person got that job, that that black person got that job. And you know what they do? They feed on that and they keep telling you, see, they took your jobs. They took your jobs. They took your fucking jobs and that's un-American. And those un-American fucks, they deserve to be killed. And that's exactly the message. They deserve to be killed. Starve them to death, right? You don't have to go full mafia. You can just starve the motherfuckers to death. Just like they did to the black people. You see you see it every day. You know. You know what's going on. Where do you think all these gangs came from? What do you think all these kids want to be gangsters for? You think it's the movies? What do you think they made the movie? How did they base the movie off of, huh? Where'd they get that idea? What, fairy tale land? You think it's all imagination? You think it's all bullshit? You have any idea what entertainment fucking is? You have any idea of fucking gangsters that own entertainment? Don't be so fucking naive. I get sick of it. I don't want to hear this bullshit about everyone's being nice all the time. Who's telling you to be nice all the time? Gangsters, thugs, hooligans, whatever the fuck you want to call it. So let's dispense with this nicety bullshit. Please, please stop. I can't put up with a world that is run by gangsters and tells me to be nice anymore. Grow the fuck up. Don't come to my fucking social media and this bullshit talking about, oh, you need to be nice. I need to be nice. I need to be nice. Look at my fucking criminal record. You look it up. I ain't done shit. Not even arrested for fucking jaywalking. Look at your fucking heroes. Look at how many times they've been fucking arrested. You fucking come to me. And you tell me to calm the fuck down? Get the fuck out of here. I'm not going to put up with the bullshit anymore. You you saw the title. Cutting through the fucking bullshit. And this is bullshit. You got these people running around here talking about they're Christian. Give me a fucking break. Or Muslim or anything. It doesn't matter. This is a joke is what it is. You heard what they said in this article right here. They said it very plain. They use ethnicity to declare war on other gangs and they fight. And that's what you're a part of. That's what you're a part of. We're all a part of it. I just want to cite this article really quick. I want to give the author's name the article that I'm reading, which is Gangs and Politics, is by John M. Hagedorn. Uh, Lonnie R. Sherrard is the editor, and Constance Flanagan and Ron Casimir are the associate editors. I just want to get that source in. All right, let's continue here. Racism against African Americans and Mexicans has also been an undercurrent U.S. white ethnic gang life. White ethnic gang life. White ethnic gang life. Isn't it? Does it, does it click? Do you hear it? Do you hear it? White ethnic gang life. In New York City, Irish gangs led the assaults on African Americans during the Civil War draft riots. Yeah, they didn't put that part in, in gangs in New York, huh? They left it out. They forgot, you know, there wasn't enough room. There wasn't enough fucking room for it, right? Fucking A. And Klan activity helped keep Los Angeles Mexicans politically quiet in the early 20th century, as well as terrorize Southern blacks. So they had it. They had it owned in California and in the South. Both own your ass, and they're still pulling the same shit. The nadir of racist gang activity was to occur in Chicago in the period after World War One. Youth gang politics in Chicago as in New York City and elsewhere, mainly consisted of gang members acting like thugs on election day for the Democratic Party, but 
unlike other cities, ethnic gangs in Chicago were also part of an ongoing violent enforcement of a segregated racial order. Chicago's white social athletic clubs or gangs tied to the Democratic Party were responsible for the intensity and duration of the 1919 race riot that killed 38. 38 people dead. Why? Because a bunch of white assholes wanted more. You heard me say it. European, you want me to call you Caucasian? What are you today, huh? One minute you're Irish, the next minute you're Caucasian, and the other minute you're white. Anything you can fucking complain about, right? What are you today? You know, you're not, you're not a thug, right? You're not a thug. You don't do anything wrong ever. You're the best person in the world. Coming to my site, guilt tripping me. Look at your history. Look at your fucking history, folks. Look at it. Look at it in the fucking face. Stop trying to rewrite it all the fucking time. Look at all this gang shit. Thug life. Thug life. Who are they, who are they going after? They going after white people? No, they going after black people. Because that's the way. That's the way it's done. Don't come at me trying to rewrite history. Don't give me that bullshit. I see through you. In the 1960s, Oppressed peoples around the world mobilized as part of national liberation and revolutionary struggles. In South Africa, youth gangs in Soweto and other cities joined with the ANC and PAC in mass demonstrations in opposition to the apartheid regime. Nelson Mandela explicitly called on the ANC to win over the gangs to the cause of the liberation. As political alternatives appeared more promising, the alienation of poor youth was channeled into political parties, as in Northern Ireland and New Zealand. Gangs, as organizations of the street, typically stayed active in the underground economy. Bank robbery, extortion, and other gang tactics were adopted by revolutionary movements from Uruguay's Tupamaros to the Irish Republican Army. This dual character of youth gangs can be most certain, certainly seen in the U.S. In Chicago, the conservative vice lords, the Blackstone Rangers, and the Black Gangster Disciples began to organize multi-neighborhood branches at the end of the 1950s. White ethnics had resisted black residential mobility and white black gangs fought continually in schools and on corners. Black gangs were involved in both petty hustling, but were also drawn to the emerging civil rights movement. Now, isn't that fucking interesting? Do you see, do you see all the big moments in history? The thugs are right there pulling the fucking strings. The thing is, is that they're so fucking disorganized that they fuck shit up and chaos ensues. And you're cheering them on when you're cheering for Hollywood and all this bullshit. You think that's not gang shit? Holy fuck. Holy fucking shit. I mean, they talk about it for fuck's sake. They talk about it. Come on. And all these cults. What is a cult but a gang? Isn't a cult just a gang that kills itself? Commits fucking suicide? Don't all gangs commit fucking suicide eventually? Hoffa and the folks still around? What do you think this is? Do you think that there's some sort of plan here? You're mistaken, folks. There's a plan. There's a plan. And they're, they're, they're doing very well at their plan of fooling you into thinking that this bullshit is about what you think it's about. It's a fight for money. And resources and power and control. That's politics. That's why I tell you when you come around here with this. I don't know what you're doing. When you're talking about do better. Be better. Be kind. Be kind to who? Thugs? You want me to be kind to the thugs? The gangsters in power? Thug life. You know. There were constant tensions between the gangs and revolutionary organizations. The Black Panthers were recruiting from the same youthful, mainly male populations as the gangs. The U.S. government 
through programs such as the now infamous COINTELPRO provoked conflict between the gangs and revolutionaries, in some cases resulting in gun battles. You hear that? COINTELPRO provoked fighting between the revolutionaries and the gang members. Provoked it. Willingly, of course. Why? Because they didn't want people to get civil rights. It's fucking like they didn't never wanted that. And on top of that, these groups had always been fighting anyway, and this was their chance to take them out. Because the police are a gang too, and they want to control drugs and all that shit too. Not because they're trying to protect you. Because they want the drug money. And the, and the prostitute money. There's a lot of money out there to be made, and these motherfuckers are greedy. What do you want me to say to you? You want me to get, tell you a bedtime story? Tell you everything's going to be okay? That's not news. That's not news. What these people are doing on TV by lying to you and telling you that these people are stand-up people is not news. It's not even journalism. It's nothing. It's, it's, it's bullshit. It's an advertisement on the TV. Okay? Take take it from me. You, you have to. You have to recognize the truth here. You can't go on lying to yourself. Gangs today have strong ethnic and or religious identities. Their political agendas often coincide with those of their ethno-religious groups. Ethnicity, religion, the two things that piss people off the most. Yeah, the gangs are using that to piss you off and to get you out there fighting each other so that they can then come in, divide and conquer, take over your whole fucking neighborhood, everything. The whole nine yards. And you do it to yourself. Fighting each other like this. That's what they want. When their group is in power, gangs can be used as shock troops and repression. When street organizations are drawn from oppressed national or religious groups, they can engage in a politics of opposition. Lack of hope in the future, however, often means gangs cynically manipulate politicians in the interest of survival, a euphemism for the underground economy. These different orientations are all represented in different hip-hop artists and forms of music. It is this aspect of gangs that makes them so important for political activism of the 21st century. Today. Today. That's right. Where social movements provide hope for those on the streets, gang organization can be one to political activism as the Alcon in New York City. Where movements advance the interest of the professionals, business, or unions and neglect the streets, gangs will stay attached to the underground economy and their politics when present will be for sale to the highest bidder. That's ugly, isn't it? If you take your cash and you say, it's my money now, fuck everyone, look what happens. Gangs come in and say, hey, that guy's an asshole, huh? That person's an asshole, huh? Those white people, those black people, those brown people, they're all assholes, aren't they? You know what we can do? We can provide you protection for a fee. That's where your crime comes from. That's where it's coming from. You know how to stop it? You can stop it today. If you, All you got to do, go into these neighborhoods, fix these neighborhoods up. Give these people a shot. Give them a job. Give them a place to go so that they're not out there strung out or, you know trying to sell drugs or whatever dumb thing and then you know they get caught by the boss and then they got to work for them and then they're not making any money anymore and it's a big fucking mess all right this is a mess these are these are gangs that are running your voting blocks they're running your whole country what are you going to do about it you're going to let these gangs win is that is that the plan that can't be the plan what are you going to what are you going to fight back when are you going to say enough? Start your own movement. Stop asking these criminals for help. These are fucking criminals. They're no good. You say, oh, well, that's, that's mean. You're not supposed to call criminals criminals. You're supposed to call them entertainers now. Yeah, that's image politics, and it's bullshit, and I'm not going to be a part of it. You're a fucking thug. You're a fucking thug. Once a thug, always a fucking thug. 
They're no good. Don't talk to me about manners and you're sitting here getting conned by a bunch of criminals. That's all I got for tonight. All right, everyone. I hope you uh, wake up and smell the coffee because it smells like shit, just like coffee always does. All right, everyone. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day, evening, afternoon, whatever it is. Stay away from these fucking thugs. Don't encourage these people. They're fucking ridiculous, and they'll fucking use you up. You can check us out on uh, more content talk on YouTube, Instagram. Uh, you can find us as well on TikTok, all at more content talk. You can also find us on Pinterest, uh, Quora, and you can follow us on Twitter at more underscore content PLS. All right, everyone. Take it easy.